Hi, my name is Leslie, and today I'm going to share with you how I put together and finish off a pillow. So I'm going to share with you how I stitch in this invisible zipper along the binding, and then how I finish the binding. So let's get started. Okay, so first of all, you're going to want to start off with your pillow front. And this one I have previously sewn with a patchwork pattern, and then I've layered with batting and the backing and I've finished my quilting on it. You don't have to do it this way but this is how I want my pillow front to look and I do finish it off with the backing like this so that on the inside when you open up the zipper it's finished so that you don't see any seams and it's it's finished. You're also going to want your pillow backing, so the back side of your pillow, and a nice long zipper. I do like to use a zipper that is longer than the actual side of the pillow because then I don't need to worry about the zipper pull and the little metal stop, but in this case this is just a zipper that I had. It's just a vintage zipper. I like using up my leftover notions, so it just happens to be one that I'm going to use today. You also might like to use a zipper foot. If you don't have one, that's okay, but it can be it can be handy. Just getting really close to the edge of the zipper. So I will put my zipper foot on and I change my needle to be over to the left. And then I have the bottom end, that bottom edge of the pillow because I like the zipper to be on the bottom of the pillow. So just the bottom edge, and then you just wanna stitch the zipper on so that it hides the edge of the fabric. increase my stitch a little bit because I don't always like those tiny little stitches. Okay, so then fold it over and then you want it to just overlap the zipper slightly. And you can press that if you would like. Sometimes I will just pin it so that it's the same all the way down along the edge of the zipper just to hide it the zipper teeth. Okay, so once it's pinned, then you want to stitch again along that edge. And I do it the opposite side so I can get as close to the zipper on this side as possible, but you don't have to do it this way either. Just You can also put it in the other way and then you'll have a little bit more of a wider seam, but it's entirely up to you. like doing it this way because I can feel with my finger where the zipper teeth are and kind of help guide it where I want it to stitch. Okay, so now we've got the zipper stitched in. Now this little piece here that's the other side of the zipper tape is where we're going to stitch along the binding. So you can see here it's stitched right into the edge of the binding. So to do that, we're going to decide which is the bottom of the pillow, then we line up our backing right along this edge. So your zipper tape will line up along the edge. Now this, you have to consider where the binding is going to be sewn. 
So first of all, if this zipper tape was wider, then you'd want to lay it along this seam or along this edge. You want it to be give you at least a quarter of an inch from, from your for your sewing. So you want this to be at least one quarter of an inch so that when you're stitching, you don't stitch into this little flap that you've made here. So if you feel like you need to kind of move it over just slightly, give yourself a little bit more room, I also pin it to keep it in place once I decide it's a good spot. And fold back your, uh, your flap here. So just pin it all the way along and I can even I can even use my pin to help keep that flap down. Okay, so now we're ready to stitch the zipper down. I'm just gonna adjust this one just slightly here. Just remove the pins as you're sewing. So now you're ready to stitch on your binding. But first of all, your backing may be slightly bigger than the front. So what you're gonna wanna do, now that you know that your bad backing is, is right where it needs to be, you're gonna wanna go to the table and just trim off any excess that you have. So just use your rotary cutter or just your scissors and trim it down. Okay, so once I've trimmed down the backing, I will just go around and just pin the front to the back, just so that when I'm stitching on the binding, it just keeps it in place as I sew. And I use a one and three quarter inch binding, but you're more than welcome to use a two inch binding or a two and a half inch binding. It's just whatever your preference is. I don't like a lot of bulk on the edge of my pillows, so this is what works well for me. And you're going to want to sew from the back side. Now generally when you're doing a quilt, you usually start from the front side, turn it over and then stitch it to the back. But when I do my pillows, I do it opposite so that I can see where I'm stitching when I turn it over and stitch to the front. I like to start on the side where the zipper pull is. You're more than welcome to start on any other area, but this is the bottom of the pillow, so I don't want any seams matching up along the zipper. So I find if I start right just before the zipper here on this corner, then there isn't any seams I need to match up along the bottom edge. Then I just sew a one quarter inch seam, sometimes even a little bit bigger. I like to do a three eighths inch seam as well. Now you can see I still have my, my zipper foot on. I can change it. However, it does make it a little bit handy while I'm sewing the binding along this seam. Now you may also want to pull this back and pin the flap down as well so it doesn't get caught while you're sewing the binding along this edge. And you just do the binding that you would normally on a quilt, turning it up, pressing your 45 degree angle, then just flat down again with this seam lined up along that edge. 
I will trim that zipper at the end. And then just every so often, just make sure that you're, you're lined up and that your flap is out of the way. Now here at the corner, I'm just going to trim my threads just so I can give you a close up here. So when you get to the corner, the flap has been turned down so that you don't get it caught in the sewing, but now you actually want to turn it up so that it is folded up when you stitch down the binding. So just fold it up and you can even pin it if you think it's not going to stay there. Then do your binding as you normally would in the corner. careful sewing across your zipper teeth. Continue to sew all the way around. I try not to pull my binding too much when I sew as well. I know it can be a, almost a habit to sort of pull on the top fabric, but I try to just let it just set on and just go into the machine as you're sewing. That way it doesn't have any bunching either. When I get to my last corner, I like to make sure that the rest of the pillow is laying flat and lined up. So sometimes I'll give it a little bit of a tug just to make sure that everything's still lining up well and that the front is not bunching or the back and that there's not, um, that everything's still lined up so that you don't get a ripple. So just the last few stitches here as I'm going, just to make sure that everything's lined up well. Now at the end here, I've kind of given it a couple of extra stitches I probably shouldn't have here. There we go. You want to use this last little bit here or the first bit that you started sewing with as your um, as your seam so you just want to fold it back and then lay this end binding piece on top of it and just oh, stitch over it just a few just a few stitches okay and then you can just trim off the excess here and then we're going to trim off this zipper end. Just have a look here. So that's what the zipper is going to look like on the back side along your binding. Now when you're ready to sew on the front you do still want this flap down so that when you do your stitching it doesn't stitch onto it and then close that seam too. So we are going to just keep this down. Now, I have been sewing with white thread, and I do like to use matching thread when I'm finishing off the binding. So I'm going to change my thread, and then I'm going to fold this over, 
man down, and then we're gonna stitch the binding along the front. So I press the back of my binding down, and that just helps to create a really nice edge on the back to make sure that there isn't any extra fabric along the seam. Sometimes it can get a little bit folded over too much, so it just really pulls it tight against that seam. And then I also press it to the front as well and create my nice 45 degree angles here before I start to sew. And then I just turn it under and fold it down. Now I just make sure that this edge of my binding just covers my stitching previously done. So that when I'm sewing on the front here, it basically just sews on top of my other stitching which will hide it in the back. So let's give it a go here. And I do like to work with a little bit of a bigger stitch. I don't like teeny, teeny, tiny stitches. But that's your preference, whatever you, you like. And then I just sew all the way around on the binding. And this way I can see where I want the stitching to be and it hides it really nicely in the back here too. I'll show you a close up in just a moment here. So I just create my 45 degree angle here, just on the corner like you normally would if you were sewing front on the back. The nice thing about this is that I don't have to try to guess where the 45 is on the back or if I'm catching the fabric on the back because I know I'm catching it on the front.
Okay, so I've got my three sides finished and now I'm ready to stitch my final seam with the zipper here. And you can see I've got my pins holding down this flap so that when I stitch this final seam, it will lay nice and flat. And when you get here to the end, it will be okay even if it catches the last little bit of your flap here that's fine it can it can get really close there you just don't want anywhere else to interfere so just sew it like the other seams I've got the zipper end here, which is kind of creating a little bit of bulk. So I'm just gonna put my needle down and then just zipper this open, just so that I can keep it away. Just show you I'm gonna just pull out my pins and we can just press this up here the flap and you can see that that's hidden the zipper nicely in there and you can see that the stitching is hidden on the back too it's hardly even noticeable sometimes it peeks out but on the front it looks nice and clean as well because you were able to see exactly where you were stitching so there's your pillow cover finished and thank you for watching.